Shreddy Nut, episode 84. You know, golf gave me the patience and the kind of vision, you know, where do you want to go? You know, next hole, next shot, you know, with my trade, just kind of like looking ahead, you know, what's the next one? What's my next move? How am I going to level up? The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax, learn the process. Yeah, it looks like pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up traders, welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host Cam Hawkins and today we've got Kane Fernando on the show. Now what makes this guy so special to get an interview here on Trading Up? Well, a couple of things. One is he's only 19. Number two, okay he's not the first 19 year old trader we've had on the show but you know he's still only 19. Number two, he was able to send me verified statement through before I got him on the show so I could see that the guy knew what he was doing. All right, number three, and this wasn't what got him an interview, but geez, he sent me through. Uh, well, we recorded a video after the show, right? We recorded a video. The video goes through. I won't tell you what it goes through, but in that video, you're going to see because we 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 arranged this afterwards. He sent me this as well. You're going to see a video of his account statement. Now, it's only part of his account statement from November, I think, 2019, perhaps. Uh, and he turns a 500 pound account into £29,000, and get this, he does it in five weeks. Now, what's even more stupid, what's even more stupid is that he lost 400 and something like 15 or £25 within the first couple of days or couple of trades. So he really, in true honesty, took a £75 account to £29,000 in five, uh, five weeks. And you're going to get to see exactly every single trade he took during that time. He goes through it. He just sent me a video off his phone. And, it, and it, like, I mean, you know, I didn't even ask for it. We just sort of, we had a chat. And I was like, oh, what, do you want to see this video? Yeah, okay, let's see it. So, guys, go over there. After watch, after listening to this, when you've got out of the car, when you finish your run or whatever, head over there, Trading Nut YouTube channel or TradingNut.com. Find the uh, episode 84 and then check out the video on the page. But then it gets even better, right? He then walks us through exactly how he did it, the strategy he used to get to that, um, to make that twenty nine thousand. And look, he admits that you know this wasn't normal, normal risk risk management. He was risking way too much for the account size he had, and he's he's changed all that, all his ways and all that sort of stuff. But regardless, it's still quite an impressive feat, and uh, really interesting to see how he breaks down a price chart, which is fairly mechanical right it's not a lot of discretion in there which i really liked as well now uh if you're looking at mechanical stuff i do want to tell you about my other videos out there i've got robot builders club series which i've just started um i'll be getting the first robot out there soon for you to see so that'll be uh with nick sean i think he'll be the first one and uh might even do a live for that so stay tuned stay up to date with things on telegram uh, the emails make sure you're subscribing to everything so that you can see you know you don't miss this when it happens uh there's some other live streams coming up as well and i'm so excited about this this is going to blow you away i'll tell you about them in a future episode but stay tuned on everything else to, to make sure you don't miss them um yeah look the build bit that bot series is, is all about me building robots that the the, the guys who have been guests on the show have provided to me as strategies that they either use or, or just dream up. Um, as part of my my sort of robot building stuff, I've got the Robot Traders Club where you get a robot of the month every month. Um, there's a free trial on that, so if you want to try that out, you can try that out. There's a Robot Builders Club where I teach you how to do what I do, and you don't need to know how to do any coding either. So if you're looking to automate some or all of what you do, then check out the Robot Builders Club, which ties into the Robot Traders Club, and there's so much in that course and so many, um, so much, so many bonuses and, ve- and benefits of, of being in that course. Um, I can't even stress it. It's, it's just go and check it out and at least consider it. And there is, should be a, a promo running at least till the end of this month. Check it out if you can find a coupon. Um, good on you, and I'll see you on, in there. Um, but for now, let's just get on with the show, and you can meet Kane 
and find out all about his trading and how he got into his trading his trading journey to date and what he does and how he sees the market. So let's do it. All right, folks, we got Kane Fernando here on the show. So Kane is a 19-year-old Forex trader from the UK. Uh, he's He goes um, by the handle KFX underscore underscore perhaps three underscores, um, and on Instagram, and uh, he runs KFX. So, Kane, welcome to the show. It's always good to have someone on under the age of 20 to tell us how to trade Forex. Uh, hey, Cam, how's it going? I just want to thank you for um, letting me on your show, and it's a pleasure to be here. And look, I, I'll preface this with the fact that, you know, I had a lot of people come come and reach out to me and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm you know, 13, I'm, I'm 16, I'm, I'm 19, after the uh, Philip Bloom episode where the guy was 15. If you haven't heard it, go and check it out. Uh, so I've, I've asked all of the people to come back with, with proof to make sure that, you know, they can actually trade. And, and uh, Kane was one of the guys that was able to do that and provide proof. So um, so what you're going to hear today is hopefully an interesting, interesting story and uh, also learn quite a bit about the forex market and how a 19 year old has approached it and got to where he is today so Kane, to start off with do you want to give us a quick well not a quick but just go into some detail as to how you managed to get to the point where you are now um where you're an educator um you're, you're making money trading forex how did you get to that point oh it's a bit it's a long story but i'll give you a bit of an overview um so back when i was about um 14 15 um, my family, we're not from like a super rich family or anything like that. Um, so we never, you know, had the flash cars and, you know, all the five star holidays. Um, but my, my parents always kind of, uh, put my, me and my brother, my sister first. So that was always like pushing us to, you know, education, uh, university and, you know, play, we used to play golf all the time. Um, and basically they put a lot of their money into my brother and my sister. So I have an older brother and older sister. And they sent my my brother to Hawaii um, University to play golf on scholarship out there. So obviously, you know, you can get scholarships if they pay 50%, you pay 50%. And um, yeah, so he went out to Hawaii to play play golf out there, which is obviously quite expensive. And my sister, they sent my sister to uh, West Texas University um, to play golf as well. Um, So yeah, she's, she's done really well. He's done really well. Um, And uh, yeah, it just costs a lot of money to... (laughs) Obviously, like American unis, um, intuition, housing, food, and all that kind of stuff. And then um, I, that was when I was about 15 years old, and I was just thinking to myself, "Is this do I want to do this?" Because I was playing golf as well, and I was playing for my county, and I was playing to a good standard. But I just kind of looked at it as in, "Is this going to pay me for the rest of my life?" And you might think, "Oh, why is he thinking that when he's 15?" I don't know. It's just how I was, um, just how it was at the time. Um, so I just kind of decided when I was 15 that I, I needed to get a, a high paying job to basically look after my parents because, you know, they've given everything for me and my, my brother and my sister to be able to do the things that we do. And I just kind of want to look after them, you know, have get them the nice cars and not to worry about bills and, you know, just look after my kids and my family when I do eventually um, settle down. And, and I know you probably think, oh, why is, he, why is he thinking of that in the future? It's just how I am. I don't, know, don't really know why it's like that, but um just how it is really so yeah i just kind of um stopped with the whole golf thing i i I, it wasn't as competitive so i just kind of played as a hobby and um yeah i I just started looking into like high paying jobs and then uh this was around the time it was like year 10 so i don't know in over new zealand if you have work experience but yeah year 10 we have um do you have have West Brent over nah, there? not really. I mean, not really out of high school. I mean, people can do work experience, but it's not a common thing. Well, fair enough. Um, but yeah, in, in the UK we do. So it was like end of year 10, you have work experience. So it's like a week, um, you know, with with a company just doing whatever. So it could be, you know, being an accountant for a, for a week, uh, you know, being a painter or something, whatever it could be. Um so this was the point where I was like, okay, I want to get work experience at a high paying job. So I just came across, you know, being a stockbroker. I think I just watched, you know, Wolf of Wall Street at the time. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is like my life that I want to live. Like, it just looks so amazing. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get, I wasn't able to get a position as a stockbroker um, in, for that week because, you know, it's quite hard to pass, pass their like basic verification to work in their floor, basically. So, um, so I ended up, 
um, basically working with my uncle, who works um, in a uh, he he was working in a charity at the time, um, but it was like a corporate charity, um, and it's called Hestia. And I started working with uh, young asylum seekers and kids, basically from minority backgrounds, um, to basically just help them find their way because they they came from obviously uh, um, countries of conflict. Um, so it was obviously quite a contrast to a high paying job, but I think that kind of molded me to actually appreciate what I actually have a bit more. So I have the opportunities, I had, I have the opportunity right in front of me to just, you know, the internet has everything you need. And I don't think people actually understand that, you know, books and, and the internet are the two strongest, um, tools anyone could have. So yeah, long story short, I, I didn't, um, get to be a stockbroker. I went into that charity for the week and it just gave me a bit of perspective. And um, when I was up there, I saw, you know, people going commuting. I saw people in the long hours, you know, 16 hours, 17 hour days. Um, and I just saw people weren't happy, you know, commuting kind of on the rat race of life or the hamster wheel, as people call it. So I just made it my mission to kind of never do something like that. So from I took stockbroking was what I wanted to do with the big money. And I saw, you know, the lifestyle of, of you know, nine to five just wasn't for me. So um, I did some more research and I found I, I just kind of fell into Forex really. Um, and I just found out that you could do you could do it from your bedroom anywhere around the world. And I was like, well, this is perfect because, you know, stop broking. You have to go into an office and, you know, spend 18 hours, 17 hour days, um, you know, not, not spending time with my family and doing things that I love. And I was like, well, that's not for me. So and then I found FX and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Um, so, yeah, when I turned 16, I studied uh, basically the basics. I opened a forex, um, opened a demo account, and just basically learned all the kind of strat, you know, basic strategies on YouTube as you know most most people do. Um, and then I, when I turned seventeen, I started college. Um, a family member set up a live account for me because obviously you have to be eighteen to actually get verified now because it's all quite like it's getting a bit more um, security tight. As, as you, I don't know if that fifteen-year-old guy had that issue. Um, I, I believe he he uh, had his one of his parents open up the account or something like that. I think. But yeah, it's, it's getting a bit like you know a bit more secure and stuff because more important people are kind of trading. But you know, if you're a young guy, um, just make sure you find out um, if it's called your parents before you do it. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so one of my family members set up a live account for me. I tried signals and. That did not work. I, I wouldn't advise doing it. You know, I mean, try if you want, but the thing is, you can you learn most when you do it yourself. So if you try, you know, you lose hundred quid. You know, okay, that's that's not for me. But I, I soon found out, you know, signals weren't the way because at the end of the day, all you're doing is copy and pasting, and uh, it never works. So um, we never advise that. But I think you know everyone kind of realizes that now. Um, and yeah, I just um, kind of. Started doing some strategies, you know, different risk management, just trying to find my way. And, yeah, I, I basically made a bit of money when I was 17. And then I withdrew a bit of cash. And then I, went, I proceeded to buy uh, 10 courses. It was like around 10 courses at the time, uh, you know, separate ones, all, all, you know, big ones from big companies, in, obviously in the space, smaller ones. Um, just like different types of ones to give me a bit of a broader perspective. Um and from that, basically, I just took the best bits from each because you can't just go in with one thing if, if you know, you, you can't just take one opinion. You know, you've got to take many and then you take the best one so you get the full story kind of thing. That's how I saw it at, when I was 17. Um, so, yeah, I kind of just took the best from, best parts from each, leaving the rest, just, you know, chuck it out. But you don't need that. And this kind of made, this kind of allowed me to, like, create my own strategy, which I have now. Um, so, yeah, that year I spent the, the majority of, of that year's back testing and refining it so you know just altering it seeing what works seeing what take profit works what fib levels all that kind of stuff um and then on my 18th birthday i went live on my own account so you know I, it was my own so i didn't have anything with anyone else um which was like quite quite a big quite a big milestone for me because at this point it's like my independence was that i didn't have to you know have anyone you know looking at my stuff um you know, my family member, obviously, it was, it was their account that they created for me. Um, and then, yeah, I started using a strategy that I uh, created, tweak, tweaking it here and there. And I was 18, so I was on my 18th birthday, a couple months in. And then um, that was good. I started I started making some good money. Um, and then in November, um, to be exact, November the 9th, 
and I'm going to give you the uh, actual proof and details of this. November 9th, I opened this, um, just a new account of BD Swiss. And I was like, okay, let's test this out. And I just kind of wanted to see my psychology in action. So a lot of people have a, um, like a mental block with, you know, with, with the numbers and, and making big money or losing big money. And I just kind of wanted to detach myself from the actual numbers because at the end of the day, money isn't real. Money is just created by humans, you know, however, however many years ago. Money is, a, money is a tool for freedom. That's how I kind of see it. It's not really something which... Um, which my, I'd strive to get. I don't strive for money. I strive for the freedom. Do you know what I mean? So a lot of people strive for money. You know, I want I want thirty thousand a year. I want forty thousand a year. It's not how I see it. Um, you know, I just want I just want to have a a good life in it and kind of look after my parents and just look after my family, and my friends. So that's why I wanted to detach myself at a young age just from like the aspect of money. So yeah, I, I opened the account on on November 9th and I um, put five hundred pounds in. And then I proceeded to lose, I lost 415 pounds of that. So I had uh, 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 75 pounds left. And um, I split that 75 pound into 29,000 uh, within five weeks um, over when I was at college. So I was just, you know, sitting in college, my business class, and uh, I was just in there and I was just making money. And it was quite, it was quite, um, it was quite unbelievable at the time just to myself. I was like, I was earning, you know, thousands and thousands per day just at the age of 18 when I was supposed to be doing coursework and stuff like that. Um, I was, you know, I was going to the library just doing it, um, you know, wasn't really, at, at the time I, I was just focused on sorting out my life and with the whole friends and, you know, socialising and stuff. I had friends, obviously, outside of college. Um, but the thing is, I just kind of focused, made, I prioritised, you know, you've got prioritised, you know, you're going to choose girls, are you going to choose friends, are you going to choose going out, all that kind of, kind of stuff. Obviously, I go out and stuff like that. But it's all, you know, you have to prioritise. Um, and that's what I did. And, and I basically dedicated, since, I've, since I was 16, I've, oh, 16, 17, I've dedicated my life to trading, basically, because I know it's going to be the thing to, you know, take me to, to all the places that I want to go. Um, so, yeah, I flipped that £75 into 29000 which I'm going to show you. Um, I can show you all the proof of that. Brilliant. And... Um, and it took off from there, really, um, and started. I just started refining my, my psychology, um, you know, kind of just detaching myself from the loss because, you know, th when you make big wins, that's all good, you know, like five thousand, six thousand pounds, whatever. If you if you start taking five thousand, you know, three, four thousand losses, um, you can, which can happen, if, you know, if you're if you're trading big enough lots, you know, you've got to be okay with that as well. So you know, it's it's all about not celebrating your wins as such. Uh, but you think you can't be upset when you take losses as well, because it, otherwise, if you're just celebrating and you know you're being upset, celebrating and being upset, it's just a roller coaster, and you're not be able to handle that for the long term, right? Um, so for me, it's just about detaching myself from the actual numbers. It's just about percentages to me. So at the end of the month, you know, if I can look and I'm ten percent in profit, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, as long as I'm ten percent every every month. That's one hundred and twenty percent for the year, right? So I've doubled my account, over doubled my account. Um, so yeah, it's just um, that's basically where it took off uh, from that kind of time, and then I've just refined my strategy, and it's just it's allowed me to be con uh, consistently profitable, profitable basically. Superb. Well, look, that's a fantastic story. I love it. The uh, the golf aspect is brilliant as well. Um, so let just jump jumping back into it. I've got a couple of questions. So the first one is like you talked about, you know, what was the first strategy that you you started looking. We well, started using when you were like before you'd done the ten courses because you said you used that you you made enough money to buy ten courses. I mean, how did that? Yeah. What well, how did the strategy look, and how did you get to the point where you'd made enough to buy ten courses? I mean, it was very like a it was very simple. It was just you know like support and resistance trend lines, um, and it was very it was very. I think I got I got lucky. Like, I won't lie to you. When I first started, it it wasn't it wasn't a very great it wasn't a good strategy. I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was just, you know, very basic. I think I got kind of lucky in the aspect that the markets um, played out in my favor, you know, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, respecting, like, significant support, significant resistance. Uh, whereas now, with coronavirus, they're smashing, you know, all-time lows, all-time highs, just taking them out. Um, obviously, you know, this was 2017 um, back then, so the market was a lot more easier to, to, to trade, that's for sure. Um so yeah, I got it was just a very simple strategy, you know, support resistance trend lines. It was there was I wasn't using Fibonacci or anything like that. Um so it's very, very basic. 
but you know it's just stepping stones you know you've got to start somewhere and it doesn't matter where you start you just have to start um i think that's a big thing for young people you know they think oh well i want to be like him i want to be like this person um but you know they just want they just want the end result and they don't they're not willing to actually put in the hours you know i've i've, I've genuinely i've spent thousands thousands and thousands of hours on the on, on the charts just just back testing you know going after college before college at, in during college or that's when it really took off for me um and now it's obviously it's my full-time it's my full-time job so um but yeah cool and and so the, the 10 courses i mean yeah so you so you obviously made some money with that first strategy right so yeah how how, how much did you make and when did you decide that you know i've made enough to start investing this in the 10 courses and obviously leave yourself with 500 pounds to to then invest in the the live account or maybe you got that money from somewhere else yeah so obviously um basically when i was when i was um 16 i left i was at my first college right i was at um it's called basvic it was in brighton and um i was doing you know psychology sociology and geography and i just hated it i was like why am i here this is not what i want to do I had a girlfriend and you know i was just all this kind of stuff and i i was just a bit lost you know people always said to me or my parents and my nan and stuff like that they're like you know you just gotta find something you love you gotta find something you love and just gotta go with that and i never found that really um and i was just a bit lost i was just kind of like like a lost soul in, in a way um and i just i i just i was like i can't do this anymore so i basically just dropped everything i broke up my girlfriend I left the college, just left it, and I went some. I applied for a new college, got a space there, and for six months, I literally just um, I worked at Waitrose full time when I was sixteen years old, um, and I saved up about I think it was like six or seven grand, and um, and basically I and then I found forex while I was working, and it was just it all just kind of it like fell into place. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like it all just kind of happened for a reason, and um, so I saved a big big pot, pot uh, like big pot of money for that um so i, I did put when I, when I initially invested it into when my um family member started my account i did put a, quite a bit of a deposit in and then uh you know i did make some good money so i made i think it was about i think it was i made five thousand on the account um from my initial deposit as well on top of my initial deposit and then and then uh i, I proceeded obviously by the courses but you know at the time you know you're gonna get courses you know some them range from you know 300 pounds to a thousand pounds or some even more so it was just getting a range of you know some cheap ones some expensive ones and kind of deciphering what the best one was um but yeah so i basically to answer your question i saved up a lot of money um when i when i was young so but all the you know young listeners out there if you have a job start saving because you know you want to be able to invest in yourself because that's the best thing i ever did uh, for me personally Cool, 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 and and so the 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 twenty nine k, I mean, how, you know, you said you got to twenty nine. Why haven't at twenty nine? I mean, is that yeah, that was five weeks. Why haven't after the five weeks? And why why twenty nine? Did you think, oh, I'm not going to make thirty, or what happened there? <laughs> well, yeah, so um, yeah, it was the five weeks. Obviously, that was like the kind of the day limit. I couldn't go over that, otherwise it would be a you know, six weeks, seven weeks. But the thing is, when I was doing that. Um, I was testing out kind of new risk strategies, all that kind of stuff. So when I was taking big wins, I was taking, you know, when I was taking big wins, I was taking wins. But the thing is also with big wins comes big losses. So I I was at that time, I was just back testing the strategy. I was trying it out, seeing if it was, you know, I could, it could work long term. And I found out, you know, it, 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 would, it wouldn't work for me because with the, at that time, it was just, I was taking, you know, like let's say I made a 6,000 loss. It, it would play on your mind, you know. I was I was eighteen at the time, um, and it, it's it's just quite, you know. If if you say to someone, if you say to an eighteen year old, okay, what would you do if you lost that five thousand pounds? You know, they'd probably cry. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, but it it wasn't that. It wasn't the fact that I, I couldn't handle the numbers. It was the fact that um, the strategy just it just wasn't working for me um, as as the way I wanted it to. Because that was, I was kind of doing like an intraday kind of thing. And I'm I'm more of a day trader slash wing trader now, and that just suits my lifestyle because obviously the whole reason I got into this is my freedom, right? I don't want the money. Well, I obviously like the money. Don't get me wrong, but the freedom aspect is the whole part I do this, and you know just kind of like working on my business and stuff like that. 
Um, and, you know, doing it intraday or intraday trading, you know, 15 minute time frame, sitting in front of a chart all day and, you know, you're not, you're not going outside. It's just not how I want to live my life. And, you know, swing trading, day trading, I can just, you know, have a look at charts in the morning, you know, enter position if I need to, um, go out, do what I want, play golf, go to the gym, meet up with my friends, do whatever I need to do, work on my business. And then I can come back in the evening or, you know, the next day and see how it's doing. And I don't have to monitor it constantly. So really, it was just it was just the fact the strategy was very, um, I needed to be on the charts all the time to, to um, kind of, you know, watch the strategy and, it's, and yeah. how it played out. Um, but, you know, back then I was just trying to, te- I was testing it out. It was just testing, you know, and finding what kind of works. But it, it worked, don't get me wrong. I made money from it and, and I, I withdrew and stuff like that. And you're going to see all the withdrawals and stuff like that, which I made. Um, but yeah, I think I made 20, 20 it was 29,000. And I, I withdrew eight and a half. Just, um, you know, have a bit of fun with it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so that was it really. That was the whole and I think to put that in perspective, I mean, I when I was when I was living in London many years ago, it was it was probably fifteen to twenty years ago. Uh, I I think I was earning I was earning sixteen thousand pounds a year at my first uh, it wasn't my first job, it was my first sort of full time job there. So that's a significant amount of money for an eighteen year old, and I would have been twenty, I don't know, twenty two or something, twenty one, twenty two, uh, maybe twenty three even. Uh, so yeah, look, it's it's. It's a fantastic story. Loved it. Um, now, what I suppose you know, you, you said you you were testing things out. You ended up like finding that you know having a sp- swing trading strategy would would be better better suit your lifestyle, give you more freedom. I mean, do you want to walk us through what that looks like now? From maybe not a strategy point of view, but just uh, some of the stats around your trading. Okay, sure. So obviously, obviously, I'm more of a um, like swing trader slash day trader. So. That all just it all kind of just depends on on the market, you know. Like you trade, you, you kind of know. Like if the, if the opportunity is there, then you can take the trades. But if not, then you can't take them. So um, recently, there haven't been that many swing trades or anything like that. So it's just been more kind of day trades. So that might be you know taking a trade, let's say on Monday, and then getting out on Thursday or Friday. So I might hold it for a week, right? That's what I kind of class as a day trade. And then you know swing trades maybe, uh, I enter it this week and I leave it in two weeks time or three weeks time. And with with swing trading, it's just I just love it because the risk to reward ratio can be really really amazing. Like you know, one to eight, one to nine sometimes, and it just does the work for you. The market just does the work for you. You know, trend is your friend. If you if you trade with the trend, it's gonna you know, it, it you more often than not, it's, it will play out in your favor. Um, which a lot of, I think a lot of people always try and go against trend for some reason. You know, if momentum's going down, you know, just it's logic, it's logical thinking to go with the momentum, right? And if it's going up, it's it's the same thing. Um, so yeah, my pro, my my win rate at the moment for this year is around eighty five percent. So it's it's been really it's been really high um, this year, um, and that's just been from me refining it and you know really becoming confident and becoming confident confident enough to teach people um, because I launched my business this year. I launched it on the March thirty first. That's when I registered my company. And, you know, that just kind of, you know, solidified to me that, you know, I've done all the mistakes, I've made the mistakes, I've lost the money, you know, I've made lots of money at young age, and I've basically just got the confidence now to start, you know, teach people what I'm doing, because at the beginning, I was too shy to do it, you know, starting on YouTube, I was really, really nervous, um, and stuff like that, and, and now it's, it's, the strategy is just, it's just so simple, like, I, I know a lot of people say a strategy is simple, but you trust me. When 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 I go through it with you in a minute, and and explain like one, two, three, four, five, it, it's just simple, and people get it. It's it's just clean and simple, and uh, it just works. So I can give you a bit of a rundown of kind of things that I look for if you if you want. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely go for it. Um, so <clears throat> it's, oh, I'll go over the time frames actually. So. What I basically do is I trade off multiple confluences. So I'm sure you've heard of that before. Yep. Um, or bet or better known as reasons to take trades. Um, so it wouldn't just be off like one. It wouldn't just be support and resistance like I would usually do, like I would have done. You know, when I first started out, which a lot of uh, you know traders do. It's using you know, uh, you know, five or five or more reasons to take a trade, right? Because then that makes your strategy uh, even like stronger. Um, the time frames that I use. So I do top-down analysis. It's just you know pretty basic stuff that people do. 
I use monthly, weekly, daily, the eight hour time frame, which is different to most traders. And you need TradingView Pro for that. But, you know, you can easily sort that out. So eight hours is really important to me. The four hour um, and then obviously the two hour, the one hour and then the 30 minute and the 50 minute. So, you know, out one hour, 30 minute and 50 minutes more for entries to get like um, to get better entries. So like on my on my Instagram, people not kind of know me for like being getting my sniper entries. And I do that by, you know, scaling down, zooming in, zooming into the 15 minute time frame, looking for the rejection rejection from the zone. And then that's how we get the, you know, the really great entries. And that allows me to have a, a smaller stop loss and a higher risk to reward. And, you know, that allows me to, you know, make more money and lose less. Um, so the list of confluences that I usually look for are ascending or descending trend line, um, significant support and resistance levels, or like, as people know, a liquidity zone. That's basically where orders get fulfilled. Um, a break and retest of a trend line. Um, structure, so previous support and resistance, broken and retested, could be. Um, four, which is really, uh, this one's really important. Golden fib zone. So that's between 71% and 78.6%. Um, no other people, no other person that I know has e- ever uses this. So um, you've heard it first. <laughs> you've heard it here first. Um, but yeah, so we look for basic rejection between those two fib levels. Okay, so that's the, the really, really important. Um, and then so, uh, psychological levels. So that could be, you know, round round numbers so like 1.100 or 1.0500. It all just depends, obviously, on the pair. Um, so, and basically, the big banks and institutions use these kind of levels to um, have buy orders or sell limits or stuff like that. They basically use these round figures. So if you go and backtest this, you can go back in time and look at these kind of brown numbers and see that price always kind of reacts. It, it's like magnetized, so it gets attracted to these regions, and then suddenly, you know, it goes in the opposite direction. And um, that's we can see that time and time again. Um, and obviously, candlestick rejection, so from uh, from areas of interest, so like spinning tops, dojis, shooting stars, or hammers, obviously, if you're looking to buy it, uh, to basically confirm the rejection, the, the rejection and possible re- reversal. And finally, the 51 EMA, uh, we look for rejection. So that's just like uh, confl- uh, another confluence um, to basically just to look for um, rejection. So that's all the things I use, and we I use them together to basically have this like super strategy um to basically take trades Brilliant. and and yeah it's, it's really once once you back test it like trust me you're going to start implementing it because you know each of them are strong on their own but together it's just trust me it's, it's just crazy it's funny um you mentioned the golden zone there so i think i'm pretty sure philip had a golden zone in his strategy with the fibs what i know you watched that video was it the same the same zone do you remember no 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 it was different. No, it's weird actually because i only watched that video I had this already in, um, in my group, right? I've been talking about it since February. The golden zone, uh, the golden pocket, I used to call it. But, you know, golden zone doesn't really matter what you call it. But, yeah, so it's different. I think he did it between the is it the 50 and the 61.8 or something. Yeah. Um, but I don't do that. I do it between the 71% and the 78.6. So I look for the deeper retracement. Um, and, uh, you know, that just kind of gets me, you know, the sniper entries, which kind of I'm, I'm known for, really. And, and how many trades are you taking in a week? Uh, well, it depends, you know, with the markets and stuff like that. If it's usually maybe four to three to ten, or four to ten. It all just kind of depends. Um, I, I wouldn't take more than kind of like ten in a week, you know, get in and out kind of thing. Uh, but it all depends, you know. Sometimes it, there might be swing trades which I might hold um, for you know over a couple of weeks or months even, and then some weeks there may be more day day trade opportunities. So it all just. Uh, just depends on the market conditions really and, and how many markets are you analyzing oh well because obviously i have my i have a member zone right which i'll obviously go over with you which i give them um many many trading and trading analysis and stuff like that but the ones that i trade it, it i trade about 15 charts which is like the ones that move the most so the majors and stuff like that um but i don't trade you know the, the slow movers like euro sheaf ends of D sheaf. I don't really trade the AUD pairs that often and then the D pairs that often because they just don't move that much. Um, just, do you know what I mean? So obviously you have dollar pairs and um, st- uh, sterling, stuff like that. They move a lot faster and they, they just, you know, uh, make you more money basically. Right. So, yeah. 
Okay, cool. And and so, what does your typical trading day look like? Oh, okay. So, um, I've just moved into my new office, actually. Um, there was this this week. So, yeah, uh, it would be like, say, a typical Wednesday. We would start around 7, uh, have a shower, drive to the office for 8, update the team. Well, obviously, my trade, I have a... My trading, uh, my members and stuff like that. So I'd update update them with any kind of like trade like, trade ideas that I have forecasting. Um, I'm in the process of filming and editing my course actually. So <clears throat> I'm basically, I base that be, that would be like the most of my day I take uh, take me to like you know film it, edit it, and stuff like that. Um, around lunchtime, I probably go to the gym. It just depends. Like obviously it's all a bit weird right now because of coronavirus, but you know go work out. Um, Come back, check the charts again, update it if it needs to be updated, take some trades if, if, if there's any trades to be taken. Um, record the midweek update for for the members. Where this is wait, this is basically on Wednesday. I just do like a, a half an hour video to basically update them on um, you know trades that I'm seeing or not. And you know I may have some one to ones to finish the day, uh, which is just on a Zoom call. And yeah, that's basically my day. And I drive home probably around six o'clock. Um, have a shower, eat or eat then have a shower, uh, and then yeah, chill out. Maybe I might read, might read a book or something. It all just depends, really. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my day. Um, it wasn't really like that recently until I launched my business. That's really when I kind of like really stepped up my whole, you know, what I'm actually going to do with my life kind of thing, and if I'm going to help people or not, you know. And uh, any other people in the office, or are you there by yourself at the moment? Uh, it's, it's just me at the moment because. Um, as the saying goes, more people, more problems. Yeah. Um, but uh, I definitely want to get some people on board it. But it's just, um, you know, finding those right people um, to work with me, and you know, just like the same, you know, having the same kind of values and stuff like that. But I, I've actually taught a couple of people um, in my local area, kind of like friends and mutual friends, and they're part, they're part in my member zone, and you know, they they basically trade how I trade. So if anyone, they're going to be those the guys that I want to take on because they really understand. The markets that I do really so yeah it's exciting the next couple of months are going to be really exciting I'm really looking forward to it yeah it sounds sounds amazing um now what do you recommend uh for a for a mum or dad trader out there what 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 do you think they need to do from here to get to the point where you are oh um so I just I'd back test my strategy really but I know I know it sounds kind of like cliche to say oh yeah use this but if you if you're struggling if you're new and you're struggling or you know you're just trying to find your way try something new like try try my strategy it's not like anyone else's try just implement it you know back test it uh, use the confluences that i i i suggest and um you know using just market structure or using just an ema or using just the fit it's it's not enough it's not enough um you know there's not enough power behind that to take a trade so if you use them all together, it's just it just makes it logical, right? It, it makes it it makes it so much better. So yeah, if you're a mum and dad trader and you just started out there or something like that, then yeah, just back test the strategy, try it out, and if it works, then stick with it and and just use it just use it for your for yourself. And you know you can you can if you're a bit um, unsure of how it works, go check out my YouTube. It's just KFX, and I basically show I do uh, every week I do weekly analysis for free. So I basically show you the the strategy in action, and then you can you can refer to that. And you know, obviously, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. And I've just, I've just really started that to help people and kind of just give them a, you know, just help them out a little bit. Because I basically what I'm trying to do is just do be the person that I wished I had when I first started. Because it's taken me, you know, since I was 16 and I'm only 20, four years to get to this point. And you know, I'm just trying to cut that in in half, or if I can, for people. Because obviously, you know, time time's something we're never going to get back. So that's my main aim, really. Yeah. Oh dear. I wish I was nineteen again. <laughs> there was a lot of wasted years back then. Um but hey, there was no internet, so you know, you guys have got an advantage. Um so <laughs> if so of the things that you've mentioned, right? So if you had to, you know, say to somebody, look, these are three things, three of those things I recommend you just go away and spend time working out, going through maybe back testing. What three of those things that you listed, the five things you listed, would you do you think are the are the most important to get right? Oh, uh, I'd say simple price action. So like just understanding simple price action. So that's just like looking at a market and knowing if it's an uptrend or downtrend and being able to identify that. 
I think that's something that a big issue which people struggle with. You know, they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna sell this, or, or, and I'm like, why? And then they can't answer that question. So you know, it's it's about knowing where momentum's going. You know, the long term and short term kind of uh, movement of the market and stuff like that. You need to be able to identify that. Um, second, probably um, how to read the language of the market, which I think is probably the most important. So that's being able to read, you know, candlesticks understanding when a reverse a reversal may occur understanding when m- momentum slowing down understanding um all these kinds of things will ba- will really take it to the next level for you because you, you're basically reading the language of the market right and that's the market's telling you what it's going to do and you just need to be able to understand what it's telling you really and that's a definitely really really an important one and last but not least i'd say focus on overcoming your fear um and just becoming like emotionless to, to, to it really like but overcoming the fear is something you can't teach right like I that's one thing I, le- I learned was that the courses don't teach you about fear about you know being becoming emotionless, emotionless you just learn that kind of you know with practice chart time and practice allows you to gain that and once you overcome the fear of you know losing money then you know you'll 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 it will take it to the next level because you know you might lose, you might lose one out of the three trades. So you're profitable for two, but you lose one. And you know, and, you, know you could be profitable overall. But you know, some people just get stuck on that. Oh, I lost one. I lost it. I lost this one. Mm. And that's okay. You need to be okay with that. Because at the end of the day, if you're profitable, and I can ask you, are you profitable? And you say yes, then happy days. Um, but I think a lot of people, you know, just get stuck on. Oh, I'm oh, only fifty. I only win fifty percent of my trades. Okay, but are you making money or not? And that's the at the end of the day, that's the main thing. It's it's a ma- it's a massive hurdle for people to to get over. Look, it took me years to get over it. Where I was, you know, I'd take that one trade, it'll be a loss. The first one, and then it, I just it ruined me because it just felt like I don't know what I'm doing. But and it, I think it was the fact that you had to wait so long for the next trade that you couldn't. It, it was it was like you can't sort of just quickly go. Oh, I'm going to fix that now. I'll get the next one right. Nah, you got to wait. <laughs> you got to wait, yeah. and then it's going to come. So um, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 would... so, have you got any anything that you you tell your you guys that that helps them out these days? I was just I was just going to touch on that real quick. Um, I think what the thing is with, with taking losses is when you know people my age, when, when you know when you deposit five hundred pounds, you always think, oh, what can I get five hundred pounds? You know that might be you no. Know, um a new a new jacket a new pair of trainers you know it all depends on your, what your budget is but you know you always think materialistically oh i could have done this this and this if i didn't lose that money or could have done this this and this and i think people just get stuck in that kind of mentality like oh i could have had this this or i've had i could have gone here i could have spent this on this girl or i could have done that it's not about that you've got to think about the long term and what you're going to gain from this long term like i might have lost x amount of money but have i made money from that and i haven't made that tenfold yeah i've made that tenfold back so it's just an investment in yourself and and you know you've got to be willing to do that um because you know if you're happy to spend 100 pounds on a night out why are you not happy to go put 100 pounds in your um trading account do you know what i mean and it's all about the mindset um and priorities you've got prizes of what you want from this in this lifetime and that's what i think a lot of people my age which i hope is listening right now yeah you know just take it just take it just take heed from my from my like experiences i've done there i've been there i've spent thousands on jackets i spent thousands on shoes it doesn't really game you anything at the end of the day um, but yeah, that's what I just wanted to say about that, really. Yeah, cool, cool. It is good advice because I mean, it, it happens all over the place. Like the whole app thing, you know, uh, your apps, an app that you're going to use every day is five dollars, and you know, people are like, "What? I'm not going to pay five bucks for that." Yeah, you'll go and buy a coffee mm. for five bucks, which you're going to drink in two minutes. Yeah, exactly. It's literally, literally. And it's gone. Uh, yeah it's gone uh, forever yeah exactly so um we're just going to quickly jump into the quick fire round here uh where hopefully it gives the guys a bit of an idea as to rounding things out here so how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable uh i'll just say just over two years so obviously i started when i was 16 and then it really took off when i turned just after i turned 18 so yeah just two over two years yeah and actually just sorry before i destroy the quick fire round here what, was there any sort of one particular day or moment where you were just like, damn, I think I got this? And what was that like, if there was? Um, I, did, I don't think it was like, you know, a eureka moment. It was more of the fact that uh, I just, you know, once I bought those courses and I kind of 
deciphered them and and understood you know the really the, the real meaning behind it and uh it just kind of just came together like not over just in one not in just one uh you know one day i woke up and it was all there it was it just slowly started to get together you know building the building blocks i was building foundations every day every day every, all the hours started to add up and it just kind of like it just you know accumulated and it just came together so it wasn't like a oh snap of the fingers i'm, I'm there it's you know, if you put the time and effort into anything, just like when I played golf, it was the same thing. You know, I put the time and effort to, to get the stands that I was at, and I just kind of used that and put that into my trading, you know, just dedicated my life to it, and uh, and it just worked out, really. And do you think the golf helped with the trading at all? Uh, touch wood, touch wood, it hurt. that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, um, with golf, it's, it's not a team sport, right? It's an individual sport. It's just you and the ball, um, which is why I loved it. And I still love it to, to this day. And with trading, you know, it's not it's not really a team it's not really a team thing. Um, you know, you can you can share advice and stuff, which is fine. But at the end of the day, it's just you in the charts, and that's why I think I kind of took took to it so easily. And that's why I loved it because I'm very. I'm when it comes to focusing on one thing, I'm very introverted. I just kind of I'm just to myself, and I'm I'm just focusing on on what I need to do. But, you know, when my, with my friends and stuff, I'm obviously extroverted and stuff like that. But yeah, I think it very it it put me ahead of the rest. You know what I mean? Like, and that's why people kind of ask me like, oh, "Why are you doing this? Why you got a company at the age of nineteen? Why are you doing that?" It's just because I have big aspirations, and I think golf just kind of um, allowed me to you know have the patience and have the work ethic to just kind of use that in trading as well, which kind of set me set me apart really. It's funny. Uh, there was some somebody. Wow, it was a long time ago now. They said um, a book to read. They recommended it on the show. Uh, Golf is not a game of perfect. I've never read it, but I I do look for it now and again to see uh, you know if it was on Audible or whatever. And I probably should read it. But do, do you think that that at all sort of correlates to to trading as you see it? Yeah, I mean nothing's ever perfect in this lifetime. Um, and you know, trading is never going to be perfect. Golf, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect. And if it is, it's never going to stay that way forever. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's you know just sticking at something and seeing it to the end of the line, um, which I lot I think a lot of people in the you know the millennial kids these days. Uh, I'm not talking down to anyone here or anything, but a lot of people of my age just kind of start something, don't finish it, start something, want quick, you know, quick, you know, quick, you know, money, quick, rich, get get rich quick kind of scheme kind of thing, which is not how it works. And if it if it did, why would it, why is not everyone millionaires? Do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, golf gave me the patience and the kind of vision, you know, where do you want to go? You know, next hole, next shot, you know, with my trades, it's kind of like looking ahead, you know, what's the next one? What's my next move? How am I going to level up? You know, it's all kind of, it all kind of just links in really. And yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy mention it now. Um, uh, but yeah, definitely, it definitely, it definitely has uh, set me up. All right. Cool. Okay, so let's get back to this quickfire round. Uh, what's your favourite entry setup? Okay, so probably a chart which has all my confluences lined up. Um, the correct candlestick rejection showing me like clear intention for reversal, basically. And what strategies do you use to exit or manage active trades? Okay, so um, when I trade FX pairs, uh, once price is 50 pips in profit, I put my stops to break even. If I'm trading gold, I put it would be a hundred pips, and then I put my stops to break even. Uh, I take partial profits, um, so I take fifty percent of my position at the zero percent fib, twenty five percent of my position at the minus twenty three percent fib, and then I just close the whole trade um, when it gets to the uh, minus sixty one point eight percent fib. So that's obviously the last twenty five percent, and this is what. I... Sorry, I lost you there for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this is what I you said, and this is what I just start from there. Oh yeah, and this is this is what I what I do with all my trades really. Cool. Okay, what's your recommended trading book or resource? Um, good books. I'd probably say uh, the Trading Zone uh, and How to Own the World. How to Own the World is very. Um, it will, it will kind of give you insight into investments and you know ISAs and funds and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely give that a read. Um, but yeah, check out my YouTube. That's probably the best. Uh, that's what I recommend, and it's. Got loads of value there for everyone, so yeah, check that out. Uh, what's your preferred broker and trading platform? Um, 
I see markets as broker I recommend for my my team and my guys. That's what I use personally. It's a good broker, has low spreads, easy deposit and withdrawals. Um, and the trading platforms I use are TradingView for my analysis, and I execute my trades on MetaTrader Four, um, which is you know you can just download on the App Store. Do you want to walk us walk us through your worst trade ever? <laughs> Oh, I don't want to relive it. Um, I was si- I was sitting in business actually um, in college when I was I was in business class, and uh, I didn't actually put a stop loss for uh, one of the trades that I had running. And you know that's just like you know it's just a recipe for disaster really. I don't know if you've ever had that before. But yeah, I ended up closing it out for uh, I lost thirteen grand on one trade <clears throat> um, back in the day, uh, which obviously is just uh, I just couldn't believe it like obviously i couldn't believe the amount of money is making but you know losing money at that time was just i just couldn't really believe it to be honest with you but the thing is i learned from that and that's the main thing and, I, and um and i've made those mistakes you know so people don't people follow me don't have to do to kind of make those mistakes so you know as like, it was a bad thing but you know you've got to flip it and kind of see the positives and i'm never going to make that mistake again so really it's like a it's like a blessing and a curse at the same time if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I'd say follow your dreams. Uh, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Trust your instincts and never give up. Um, if you 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 will find a way to make it work if you truly want it enough. Um, that's probably what I'd leave you guys with. Uh, it sounds very you know one of those things, but. Yeah, I just, I definitely think you know, you just got to follow your heart and kind of just do what you do what you want to do in this life, kind of thing. So, yeah, cool. Okay, well, look, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you? Um, so my YouTube is KFX. So if you want to check out like the strategy in action and me breaking our charts, check that out. Give me a little, just subscribe if you uh, if you're gonna check that out. Um, or check out my uh, Instagram, which is KFX with three underscores. Um, but yeah, the best way is probably DMing me on Instagram and, uh, I reply to everyone. Um, you can follow my personal Instagram too, where I post, like I post more like lifestyle content and which I'm going to start posting blogs and stuff soon. So that's Kane.Fernando. Uh, but yeah. Brilliant. Well, look, a big thank you to Kane for sharing with us today. Everything we discussed here along with all the links are in the show notes to find them. Simply search for Kane in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, so there we have it. Interview done and dusted. Now, look, as I mentioned at the start of the show, please do take the time to head over to the YouTube channel, watch the video we shot after the show, and you're not just going to find out how he does what he does exactly step-by-step. It's crazy, guys. It's a step-by-step strategy, right? Uh, You're going to find that out. You're also going to find out, or you're going to see proof of his account growing from a very small amount, £75 to £29,000 with withdrawals in it. He's taking money out along the way. Uh, You're going to see that as well in the same video. So folks, head over there, tradingnut.com or YouTube, find Trading Nut, find the video, check it out. Trust me, this is worthwhile watching for anyone looking to increase their knowledge about trading or even just for a bit bit of fun to have a look at. All right, guys, enjoy, and I'll see you on the next one.